In today's show, we're going to look at how we can embed a Power Apps app inside of Power BI. There's a special visual that's been released to allow you to connect the two so we can have an interactive experience and make your actionable data actually actionable right there thanks to the embedded Power App. Should be pretty exciting stuff. But before we jump in, here's our intro. <laughs> Can you believe someone today had the nerve to tell me that they don't like that intro? I hope you love that intro. If you don't, I guess you can leave me comments below also and tell me you don't like it, but it really hurt my little feelings. They didn't like my Bold Zebras intro. What do you do? Anyway, hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And today's show is all about taking our actionable data that we make in Power BI with those awesome reports you're building and embedding a Power Apps app right there on the report dashboard so that, that way you can interact with it in real time. We know that the push these days is to make actionable data in these BI reports, right? BI is not very interesting if it's a bunch of red light, green lights that really you can't do anything about. So we're making these more advanced dashboards every day that actually have data of consequence. And so now what we're doing is we're just taking it to that last mile, that last step, and we're saying, hey, let's take and embed a Power Apps so whatever action it is they need to be taken from that data, you know, whether it's sending an email, ordering some new uh, materials, creating a project for someone to do, let's embed that right there inside the Power BI. So this is all new stuff for Microsoft. This is preview, uh, right? They're kind of jumping ahead of the game. They're figuring out where we need to be in the future. And so I thought I'd do this video to help you figure out how to hook up the two. Uh, once you get them hooked up, it works pretty well. It's a pretty seamless experience, but there is a couple little hoops to jump through there. So I thought I'd make a video and help us out. Let's switch over here to my desktop. And we're gonna open up my browser. And so here is a Power BI dashboard I made with a Power Apps visual embedded. Um, I did this based off of some cryptocurrency data that I had laying around. It's, a, it's an Excel spreadsheet that I imported and I made some cute little charts, right? A little price by date and this is the value of my portfolio by date. Um, I can tell you this is not a big spike in me uh, making a bunch of money. This is me spending a bunch of money, but whatever. Um, and you know, this is all just sample data, but it gives you an idea. It gives us something to work with, right? I'm not the best at making, uh, as an example, BI dashboards, but what I'm good at is teaching you how to do the mechanics so you guys that are good at actual BI and understanding your business data can make those. So all of this is just out of the box Power BI. And over here is the Power App that we embedded. And what you can see is if I choose a date, so if we say, all right, February uh, 12th, you can see, all right, so here's this one's filtered by, this one's filtered by, and my Power App filtered by it to show you the different values of uh, available that date. And this is a fully functional Power App though, right? So it's integrated, it's pulling data from here. And now I can say, email this and click my little button, all right? And then it's like, all right, where do you want to email it to? I put a default email address in there to make it easy on me. And then what type of note? This note data is also pulling from the Power BI. So I could type other stuff, right? What do I could type? Other stuff. Um, but then when we hit send, what it's going to do, just like any other Power App, it's going to send us an email. I'll get that in like 10 seconds. So hang on. And there's the email. We'll double click on it. And there you can see, um, came from me. It went to me. Uh, the subject, I made an email from Power Apps, completely configurable. And then this is looking great, February 12th, the date, and there's other stuff. So pretty you know, simple solution, but hopefully this is going to get you guys this kind of wheels turning on what you can build. So what I want to do now is I want to walk you through how I built this so we can build this together and you can get a better idea how this works. So let's see, we'll click on home, right? So let's reset that, we'll undo that. Okay, so we're back at a base Power BI dashboard and we'll leave this one here, but I should probably delete it so it's not confusing. But what we want to do first is we need to add the Power Apps visual. Now that's this little purple icon over here, but you don't have that purple icon, so let's not cheat. So I'm gonna click on that and say delete this custom visual and delete it. Okay, so I don't have it, just like you, you don't have it. So click the ellipses here, and you want to import from Marketplace. So click that, you're going to get a pop-up here for the Marketplace, and then in the box here for search, we're going to search for Power Apps. We'll hit the little search guy, and we'll get the Power Apps. You can see it's a preview web part, right? And that's important to understand that all of this is preview. So there's some, there's some warts here as we kind of work through it. It might not be exactly perfect yet, um, but it works, it's it's tangible, and we can start to play with it. So just keep in mind though, it is in preview, so you know, tread lightly sometimes. All right, anyway, click add, 
importing our custom visual. So now we've got the little purple icon. So now we'll click it. And so that puts us a power app here. And we lost the other one, right? When I deleted the visual, it deleted the other power app. I should have pointed that out, but that's why the other one's gone. And so the first thing you have to do, this is the tricky part, is you need to select what data you want to share with the Power App. And so here I'm going to say I want to do um, the date and then ETH value and LTC value. And so then you get to create new. Now here's one of the weird things. If like, wait a minute, Shane, I didn't just get create new. That's probably because you're using the Power BI client. Notice I'm using the website. The Power BI desktop client right now doesn't support the uh, Power Apps visual creating a new connection. So if you've been doing this in the Power BI's uh, app, just go ahead and take that and publish it out to Power BI. And then once you get it out there, then open it on the browser and hit edit. And then your create new button will be sitting there waiting on you. Don't worry, I'll wait while you catch up. All right, you caught up, right? Because you hit pause. <laughs> anyway, all right. So now that we've done all that and we've got this create new button, um, we're going to hit create new. You could choose an existing app. So if I wanted to choose that app that we just had a minute ago, I could just bring that one back in, but that wouldn't teach you anything. So let's do create a new. Okay. So then after, you know, 30 seconds or so of creating the app for us, we get the little pop-up screen. So I'm going to say skip the whole tutorial thing. And so here we can see we've got some data already. What they did is they created us a screen, they created us a gallery, and kind of got us going. So what I would do is make sure you've got gallery one selected. And so data is custom, that's good. But then layout, we're going to change that. I'm going to say, from, I'm going to set a title. I want to do that as title, subtitle, and body. All right, because we're going to make that same one we made earlier. And so then we're going to see that we've got different values. And I'm going to put, for subtitle one, we'll put the ETH value. And for subtitle two, we'll put the LTC value. Now, the third one, this is one that I probably spent a couple days figuring out. That's what I'm hoping to save you some time on is over in my Excel, I have the date stored as 12 uh, forward slash 19 forward slash 2017, right? The date format here in the US. And for Power BI, everything is hunky dory, right? It's like, hey, I get those dates. It's even translating them. It understands. And it's just one field called check date. But when you integrate with Power Apps, that date field doesn't work that same way. So what you need to make sure you do is that you take, when you added this date field, right here on this little drop down for the field, you wanna, instead of showing check data, you wanna show the date hierarchy. If you just show the date, and so just pass the date over to Power Apps, Power Apps will return blank. There will be nothing there, it will drive you insane, and you waste a lot of time on it like I did. So instead what you wanna do is you wanna choose date hierarchy. And so date hierarchy, is gonna give you the breakdown and then we'll just put it all back together over in Power Apps because we know how to do that, okay? So this was a big challenge that I had. All right, so let's switch back over to Power Apps. And so right now we can see it's just showing month, that's fine. Because what are we gonna do? We're gonna go up here and let's go fix this, right? So now we're just doing basic Power Apps, right? This item is the current item in the gallery, right? And if you're unfamiliar with any of this, you know, I recommend you watch one of my earlier videos on kind of getting started with Power Apps. Um, Getting started with Power Apps and Excel is probably the best one for you. There's also one for SharePoint. But either way, this is just a simple gallery. And so this item represents the current one, right? And so I have different entries. And so each one of these little cards has different values because it's that current item. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say we want this item. And, and then we're going to add some text. And, and we're going to do this item again. And for this time, we'll do uh, day. All right, oh, it gets to December 19th, good, good. And so then and, and we'll do, we'll do Q, right? Comma, space, quotes, and this item dot year. So there you go, so we reconstructed the date, right? I was really hoping they were just gonna send me 12, 19, 17, like I had in the Excel. Instead they sent it to us in these well formatted, well thought out parts. So we just had to, had to do a little reassembly. Not a big deal, we're pretty smart, we can do that type of stuff. Okay, and so if we hit the preview button real quick, we can see now for every date, we've now got the ETH price, the LTC price, or uh, value, and we can scroll through this, right? That was already built for us, we just had to do a little, little, little twisting. So let's take that, let's fix this up a little more because I don't like uh, this being so confusing. So we'll do, add some text here, we'll say ETH price, colon like that and throw ampersand boom 
So now that does. If you wanted to, you could then format this, right? So this number currently is formatted really weird. Um, and so to format that properly, hold on one second while I get my cheat sheet over here. Okay, so you gotta love the power of pause. That might have taken me two seconds. That might take me half an hour. You'll never know how long that took me. But now that I've got it, so right, we're gonna say e, uh, ETH price, we'll paste in this formula. And so we're gonna do text and then this item dot ETH value, right? So our current one. And so the text function is just gonna take that value and format it this way. And so here you can see that I formatted it without uh, the decimal points. Let's throw the decimal points on the end, like so. And bam, wham, we've got our decimal points. We'll put a zero, boom. Okay, and so then now that we've worked that out, what I'll do is I'll just copy this, so copy, and then we'll select this one, and so it's LTC value, so let's change this ETH here to LTC, and instead of that, we'll do that, just like that, and so and I don't want the zero, I want the pound. All right, so anyway, that gives you a pretty quick indicator, right? Boom, we were able to customize our app and you know do a little formatting, make it a little better. And so then now we want to add the email button. And so to do that, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to do a new screen. I'm going to make a blank screen. And I'm going to do a good job, and I'm going to name this email screen. And so then over here on the email screen, now we would just kind of start to build that out. Um, so you know we need to insert a uh, in text input box. So that'll be where the email address comes from. We'll insert another text uh, box for the notes. So I'll do it like that and like that. And so I'm also going to do um, email two. We'll call this one email body. All right, just like that. Um, we'll do a label. We'll be good. I was going to skip it because you could knew what it was going to be, but email, it helps if I spell it right there, right? Email address, boom, another label. We'll drag it right here and we'll do um, message. All right, oh, I kind of got these all formatted. You, you get the idea, but you know, sometimes I feel bad that I make such ugly stuff for you guys. We can grab this, make it bigger like I did in the other example. Then we're gonna add a button. And so then for our button here, um, we want to be able to, you know, send email. Well, unfortunately, I have to do a little more than just that, right? And so we've got a, whole, I got a whole video linked below on the mechanics of sending an email, but we'll go through the quick version of this. And so what we need to do here is we're going to go up here to View and Data Sources. And so right now we don't have any, so we're going to say Add a Data Source. And then I'm going to use the Outlook connection. And if your Outlook connection doesn't show up, then do a new connection and search for Outlook and set it up, so I'm gonna use my Outlook connection. And so then once that comes back, we're good there. And so then now we go over our send email. And so on select, what we can do now is we start typing, we get office365 dot send email. And that's all right, so who's it to? Well, it's to, and we're just going to use the email underscore to uh, that they provided. And we wanna do a dot text there, so we get the text, the email address. For the subject, we'll just type it in, our subject. And then for our body, we will do the uh, email body field and then dot text from that as well, right? So we closed all that out. And remember earlier on the example, also in the default text, what did I include? I had some, um, I said, you know, something like good job. And then oh, we'll do a space. And then I did the ampersand again. And then I did what? I did, I want to call out the um, item that got us here, right? So I'm going to go gallery one dot selected dot, and then we'll just do, um, we'll just do the month. But right, so good job, December. But you could then, you know, go back through and copy the stuff from the previous screen. Let's, let's be complete. You're right. Good. I know. All right, we'll go back over here. So we're going to do, there's our date. That was how we got it before. Now we can't exactly use that, right? Because this is pointing to this item. And over here, we're not using um, this item, we're using gallery.selected, but we'll paste it in here and we'll fix it. So I'll delete that, we'll hit Control V to paste that in, right? It's like gallery, what? 
And so we'll do gallery one dot selected dot month. Boom, that fixes that one. Gallery one dot selected dot day fixes that one. Gallery one dot selected fixes that one. Cool. All right. So now we can send an email. Uh, the other thing I would encourage you just to make your life easier, we're going to throw a button on here that says go home. If I can grab that button, put it down here. Go home. And what are we going to do with the home button, right? We're going to say on select, we're going to do a navigate, navigate to screen one. And then we'll choose a transaction, transaction, transact, transition. Easy for me to say, like so. All right, we're pretty close. So that gives us an email screen. And so then if we go back over here to gallery one, now we're just going to change this little arrow and say on select, select the parent, right? Because we want to make sure we're marking what we want. And then we're going to have a navigate here, navigate to email screen. And you can just do a fade, I don't care. So then BAMO, WAMO, we now have fully functional recreated app. Um, I think the other one I went ahead, let's, let's do a good job. And right, I put some text up here, said label, my power app, we'll highlight all that, we'll click home, we'll make it bold, we'll make it bigger, and we'll make it this pretty green color. We'll center it, oh, isn't that awesome? Aren't you guys proud of how good my design skills are? It's very sad. All right, so now that you've done that, what do we need to do? We wanna to go to file and app settings, we're gonna name this, um, We'll name it Shane made this. We could change the icon, all that stuff. Yellow, boom, looks great to me. And then we'll hit save. And so we'll save it. Shane made this. Wait a few seconds for saving. I sat perfectly still the whole time that was going on. It's pretty cool. And so then we'll say share this app, right? Because you've made a Power App, you've saved it, but you got to make sure that everyone who has access to your Power BI report has access to the app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, add everyone to my org. I will not send them all an email though. They will not appreciate that and say save. So everyone's now got access to it. And if I did everything correctly, fingers crossed, go back over here to Power BI, look at that. There's my Power App. And so we'll hit save here. All right, my report is saved. And so then now what happens? All right, if we go in, we choose this January 3rd. Oh. All my data filtered, including my Power App. If we hit the little button. Oh, we need to put an email address. I didn't set that this time. Shane.young at boldzebras.com. Send an email. And so then we'll wait a couple seconds over here. And look at that. Good job, January 3rd, our subject. Yes, we have successfully hooked up Power Apps and Power BI and to build a actionable dashboard that is actually actionable. Who doesn't think this is awesome? Like I said, I showed you some of the bumps along the way. Make sure that you're thinking about those. You know, make sure if you're having problems, um, I mean, leave me messages below. People love to ask questions. Or if you're, there's a scenario you want to see that I didn't cover. Also remember, if you're like, oh, how did you send that email? I've never seen that before. There's separate videos for all of the uh, concepts that we didn't spend a lot of time on. So hopefully that helps you out. All right. Cool? Cool? Well, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the Bold Zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these Power App videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.